Management of the soil structure is a very important component of managing soil health. The soil structure is the aggregation of the particles, sand, silt, and clay, into aggregates. This aggregation has a strong influence on how well roots can penetrate the soil, as well as how water and air moves through the soil. Soil structure is typically defined by three different components. One is the geometric shape, two is the bulk density, and three is the porosity. This video is to help you identify the geometric shapes of soil structure. The structural shape is the actual three-dimensional shape of the aggregate. There are four or five different types of structural shapes, the most common of which in surface horizons is granular. It, you frequently see this in um, seed beds or in backyard gardens. Usually the, the gran granules are, very, are small, they're eighth to a quarter of an inch in diameter. Um, they're either spherical or elliptoid, like egg-shaped. And they'll be very, very small um, particles and they frequently have lots of visible pores in them. This is typical granular. It's about anywhere from an eighth to a quarter of an inch in diameter. If you get very close, you can see it has many uh, pores in it. The pores are caused by uh, both roots, uh, vermin, insects, grubs, uh, worms, nematodes that, that help uh, define or help create that, the granular structure. The next most common type of, of structural shape is blocky. It's frequently found in the upper subsoil. Um, it is typically uh, six or eight sided uh, blocks, rectangular blocks. If they have very sharp edges on them, such as this, we'll call it angular blocky. If the edges are more rounded, they'll be called subangular blocky. It's most commonly found either in the surface horizon or in the upper subsoil, sometimes in the lower subsoil. Um, the, these blocks break readily along fracture planes into smaller and smaller pieces until the point where at some point um, they essentially become the size of the granular structure. It's in th these are very important because the water will move between the cracks of these aggregates that, that is percolating down through the soil profile. They also, the interior of these blocks will actually store water for plants to extract later. When soils get wet and they have high clay content, they will frequently swell because some of the water can actually enter part of the clay structure. When they, when they swell up, they, they cause great pressures in the soil, lateral pressures into the uh, horizontal aspect of the soil. When they dry, the soil will shrink slightly and leave cracks. This next horizon is actually one that's been what we call puddled, which we'll discuss later. But it's, it's been puddled probably over the last, from the last time it was deep ripped 30, 35 years ago, and it's just beginning to start to show reformation of a columnar or prismatic structure. Prismatic structure is quite rare. It's only in very high shrink soil clays. Columnar is a little bit more common. They're somewhat difficult to tell, distinguish between. You can see these vertical cracks that are starting to form in this soil as it dries out. The cover crop here, we recommended a, a safflower because it puts down a relatively deep tap root. We wanted to dry this layer out so that we can then do deep tillage on it prior to replanting. I'm gonna break out one of these uh, columns There we go. See how it breaks out vertically? It's oriented vertically, and there's a crack gonna form right there. And this is so massive, it broke off here. Um, typically, these have very um, hard, massively structured interiors. Um, roots have trouble penetrating them. They do store a fair amount of water, but a lot of that water is unavailable to the plants just because the roots can't get into it and to get it out. The bottom horizon on this particular uh, site is massively structured. That means there really hasn't been any aggregation into uh, other geometric shapes. <clears throat> the soil is hard. Um, it, it breaks exactly where you put pressure on it because there's no cracks in the interior. Um, you can see this one also has modeling, which is an indicator of very, very poor drainage, and glaying, which is even a worse uh, indicator of very poor drainage. And the, it's the interesting aspect of this, as I said, this was, t was puddled due to tillage probably 40 years ago. Could have been even further into the past, but it was at least 
prior to the last generation of grapevines on this land. And then it stops here and goes massive. Massive is better than puddled, and it looks as though this soil was ripped to about 38 inches the last time it was ripped because right at this level, the puddling stops. It goes from puddled into massive below. So the bottom wasn't, wasn't tilled. It was only tilled to about 37 or 38 inches. Platy structure is a thin, horizontally oriented, laminated appearance, much like plywood, due to its formation as repeated layers of soil being deposited on a surface. It's typically a surface layer structure in frequently flooded soil or can be found in subsoils from layering from thousands of years ago. Prismatic structure is a formation of longitudinally oriented blocks that have one axis much longer than the other two. The blocks have a shape similar to a golf pencil with six or eight sides along the longitudinal axis and a length that is two to four times greater than the diameter. This structural shape typically is seen in soils with high concentrations of clay that swell when wet and shrink when dry. This happens because water can enter the inner layer space of some clay minerals. The intense pressure exerted during the swelling processes causes the natural formation of compressed prisms in the multifaceted sides. Soil structure is an important component of soil health because it influences the soil's ability to allow for air and water infiltration, drainage, and storage, as well as plant root penetration and exploration for air, nutrients, and water. In the next video, we'll discuss other aspects of soil structure, bulk density and porosity, and how to assess these in preparation for deep soil tillage.